Move over, goulash. There's a new soup in town. I'm Ashley, this is my husband Josh. Welcome to our channel. We sold everything we had to travel the world and now we want to share with you the way away. So be sure to subscribe down below, give us a like, and hit that bell so you can follow more of our adventures. Let's go. exciting day because we are going to eat all the Hungarian food of our dreams. Um, you might have seen like a lot of videos about the chimney cakes mm -hmm. or, or goulash. goulash, but today we're going to try some traditional dishes. I've tried to find the best locations mm -hmm. within Budapest to go and find these dishes and eat them. So let's go. Okay, which one is the best one? Mixed, because two kinds of fish. <laughs> okay, yeah. yep, perfect. So let's get that one too. So many of you, when thinking of Hungary, you might think of goulash, but another soup that's amazing is called Han. <laughs> Shoot. When you guys think of Hungary, you think of goulash, but another soup you should be thinking of is Han Lasli. It is a fresh water fish soup that is popular in the winter time at Christmas, but also popular in the summertime when all the fish are caught in the freshwater rivers here in Hungary. And there's a saying in Hungary, Anya has Anya Sokas. Basically means as many houses, as many traditions. There are a million ways to create this dish. Mine has catfish and carp, and Ashley's is completely different. There are three things that make a amazing halasli. There are multiple fish in the dish, so Josh's has two different fish that will give the dish a bunch of depth. The second thing would be, um, this is what spices up the soup. It has some peppers, onions, and um, paprika. Here in Hungary, paprika is used in almost anything. And lastly, almost everyone would say the only way to make them is in a cauldron over an open fire. On the menu, there were at least 12 different options of how to have this type of soup. I chose the one with the traditional noodles inside, um, and I was actually expecting a lot more noodles, but there's just a few in here. And then my fish that I have in here is carp, and they're huge chunks. That's something that you learn about this dish, is that the chunks of fish are not small. You practically have the whole fish inside your dish. <laughs> We've never tried this before, so we're gonna give it a go. Mm. The fish is so tender. That is really good. It's almost like chicken noodle soup, but with fish. <laughs> That's what it reminds me of. I'm gonna have to put some more spice in there. The paprika, I love the kick that it gives. But it's really yummy. So my halasli is similar to Ashley's, except there are no noodles in it, and it only has two types of fish. And I haven't put any spice in there yet, so I'm just gonna taste it raw how it is. Mm. It's still pretty hot, which is nice. It hasn't cooled down too much. Mm. The, the fish itself didn't seem to have any particular spice to it. It was pretty much just a raw fish taste. Well, not raw, it was cooked, but you know, plain fish. The broth is really tasty. It's got a fish taste to the broth, a bit of spice, kind of like, um, I guess it's paprika probably. Really, really good. I could definitely see this being nice on a, a cold winter's day, but you know what? It's probably 90 degrees Fahrenheit <laughs> yeah. out and this is still perfect. One other thing, I'm not sure if it's traditional or not, but we've seen a lot of Hungarians drinking this. It's white or rosé wine with soda water, and usually they'll add some ice cubes. Perfect for a summer day like this. It's super refreshing. <laughs> I 
like to spend about seven dollars on your bowl of um, fish soup. It was delicious. Mm -hmm. um, we came outside the city center, so in the city center, maybe a little more Could expensive. Be. But down below, we'll put a like, link to a map so that you can see exactly where we came. All right, off to the next one, pancakes. We're at our second location. We've started with drinks, and I've noticed throughout the city, lemonade seems to be a thing. So this is lemonade and orange, but you can pretty much get any lemonade of your dreams in the city of Budapest. Our next dish is hortobagi palacinta. It's a hortobagi pancake. Portobagi, uh, they don't necessarily know where that came from. They think it's a marketing trick because it's actually a region of Hungary, but it doesn't come from there. This was invented for a World's Fair that Hungary attended. So, there you have it, Portobagi Paracinta. But this is not a pancake as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> it's considered a meat pancake. Aha, uh -huh, okay. So, if you get in close, you can see it's more of a crepe, which a lot of the world says is a pancake, admittedly. But, oh yeah, that's like a minced meat and onion in there. That's great. Okay, let's give this a shot. Yeah, it's like a gravy on top. Maybe some, um, maybe some pepper in there. But yeah, it's minced meat with um, with a crepe. It's good. I, I, it's gonna easily be a breakfast food item for me. I feel like Josh is like the worst critic when it comes to pancakes because he just loves them so much. So what 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 do you give us at one out of a five? Out of five? Yeah. I'll give this a solid 3.7. How about Ooh, that? Yeah. Mid range. That's very high on the <laughs> mid range. So in making this dish, they create a stew with the meat and the onions, and then they put it in the pancake. Um, then they put it in the oven and put this sauce on top of it. The sauce is paprika, and then they use um, also uh, sour cream. They bake it, and then they put fresh veggies on top. Um, not really veggies. I don't know what this stuff is called. <laughs> I can't remember. <laughs> But anyways, it looked really good, and like I said, paprika is pretty much used in every dish I feel like here in Hungary, and I'm loving it because it just adds the perfect amount of spice. Not super spicy, but just a little bit of flavor. Mm. On a scale of one to five? Mm. Mm. I might like this better than the fish soup. Really? It's really good. You know what it reminds me of is... Um, because it has all the gravy, it reminds me of, um, what is that stuff my mom makes with the mushrooms? Strudel, not strudel, stroganoff. stroganoff? This reminds uh, me so much of stroganoff. Yeah, it's kind of got that same style of gravy and, yeah. the, and the minced meat and all The that minced stuff. meat, yeah, and then like instead of noodles, they have the pancake and so it still has the similar texture. That is really good and I feel like it's stroganoff uh, Hungarian style. <laughs> it's yummy. So we're at a place called Turv, and this is specifically um, interesting because it's a prejo, I think that's how you say it, prejo. It's an old holdover from socialist times where it was a restaurant that's both a cafe and a bar sort of towards the end of the night. It's like a local pub, essentially. But this is specifically socialist Hungarian, so really cool. overlooking the city. We are going to number 23 where we're going to taste some delicious confectionaries. Con confection some dessert. <laughs> the most touristic place we've been all day, but it's also the most cultural and historic given that it's in the castle complex so established in 1827. So we're gonna try some desserts. If this delicious looking dessert looks familiar to you, then you must be a Patreon because Josh and I started a Patreon poll, a food poll, every month where our Patreons can choose what we eat in one of our videos. And you guys chose this Dolbrosh cake. We are so excited to try it, and thank you so much for voting on this because um, I really wanted to taste it. 
In 1885, a Hungarian named Yusuf Dobrosz made this dessert. He created chocolate buttercream. At the time, buttercream was not known to anyone. Um, the reason why he created that, because he wanted to learn how to make a cake that would be able to not go stale within two to three days. On the, in the middle, there's sponge cake, and then there's also um, caramel right on top here, and it looks nice and crunchy. Oh, shit. I love buttercream, so I'm really looking forward to this. Mm. It's so chocolatey. And the crunch of the caramel is so nice. It's like a little caramel cookie on top. <laughs> mm. And of course we couldn't go without trying their famous cremes. Cremes? It's a 170 plus year old recipe that hasn't changed. It's a favorite among Hungarians. And it's sort of a, a cream pastry. Cremes means creamy. <laughs> Whoa. Okay. It's almost the exact same flavor of a creme brulee. Almost exactly, but lighter. And we love creme brulee. I love creme brulee, but creme brulee is quite heavy. I think I could eat a pan of this. Oh my god. It's so good. Whoa, you, no seriously, you do have to try this, but first I'm having a little more. What's on top, like a cookie? It's a pastry sort of thing. Not sure exactly what that is, obviously, but it's flaky like a pastry. Easy to cut through, not like your caramel from the last one. Look at that. Slow down, slow down. <laughs> oh yeah, it just cuts right through and the cream is so fluffy looking. Mmm, the cold. <laughs> it's almost like thick whipped cream. Yeah. It's um, vanilla flavor, so yeah, it's just really good, like thick whipped cream. That's yummy. Oh my gosh, those desserts were delicious. Thank you so much to our Patreons for voting for us to eat that delicious cake. If you want to vote next time we have a food poll, then check out the link below and become one of our Patreons and you can be a part of the vote next time. But we are full to the brim and can't fit anything else. Let us know down below also what you, you would like to taste. What one of the dishes we had today was the most intriguing to you. All right, hey fam, I hope we encouraged you to get out there and travel today and we'll see you in the next video. Bye. Bye.